Hallelujah. The last time I talked about, um, I'm not going to rehearse that, but uh, <laughs> the uh, being secure in God's love, uh, secure in the fact that God loves you no matter what the circumstances are, what's going on in life. Coming to the place, and it takes a little time to get to the place where you're secure in His love, that you have confidence in that. And that's just a matter of taking His hand and following Him, walking through life, the circumstances of life. But it's ever, it's, that is an ever, everyday type of attitude or everyday type of relationship, that love relationship with Jesus. And being secure in that. Um, I'm <laughs> going to do James 1. I can't help it. but <laughs> Why? I'm sorry. Why? I'm sorry. <clears throat> I apologize. <laughs> but this whole thing of being secure in God's love, well, where does it take you to? That's the thing. Where do you go with that? What what I mean that's the basis of the of God your relationship with God and, and his relationship with you has been it should be. It's not based on there is the healthy fear of God. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't fear hell. You don't fear death. You don't fear none of these things. You do have a healthy fear of God. That's okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But it must progress beyond just a healthy fear. It must progress to a love of God. It must progress to that love type of relationship with Him. And, and becoming secure in that fact. And that doesn't happen overnight. It's a walk. <laughs> That's why the, uh, Christianity is a walk. It's a way of life. But James 1... Um, this is very familiar, nothing new. I don't know why here, but I do. I mean, this is where we're going. This is on what was on my mind, so <coughs> got to follow it, right? <laughs> uh, James chapter 1. Um, just stick to verse 1. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to get to 2, Yeah, well, I'm going to skip verse 1. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but ver uh, verse 2 says, My brethren, consider it. I like the way this version says it. it. says, consider it the purest joy when you're involved in various trials. The purest joy. Now we think of joy and we think of, uh, we mistakenly think of it as pleasure or as a, 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 a feel-good type of thing, right? We, 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 right away, joy, we think of that and that's not what he's talking about. The joy here is entirely different. It's a sustaining joy. It is a joy that brings life. It, uh, it brings peace in the midst of chaos. That brings peace. It's a joy that you can look at your life and you can say, Hallelujah. You can look back and see what God has done in your life, how He's changed you, and that should bring you joy. And then you can look and say, Well, He's done it then, and He's taken care of this in me. He's changed this in me. And you can look forward and say, you can look for the joy. Jesus has said he looked for the joy that was set before him. Amen? And that's the difference. You see, flesh likes to have pleasure now. It likes to feel good now. Right? We're all human here, right? <laughs> it likes now. But this is different. He's, it says it's the, the purest joy. The purest joy. See, we have there's joy, there's joy that the satisfying uh, things of life or, or the flesh or that, but that's not pure joy. This pure joy sustains. This pure joy looks beyond the present and looks to the future. This pure, this purest form of joy is that. I get stuck on that. But there's a difference. So we have to recognize that there is a difference. So it, um, verse 3 says, For surely, for you surely know. Now this, that's something. He says, For you surely know. How much of us are sure about this? <laughs> How many of us are grounded in the fact that we don't live life 
according to the flesh, according to what makes the flesh feel good, or the present, or, okay, um, the, here's this circumstance, how do I make myself feel good about this circumstance? How do I get myself through this circumstance and still feel good? <laughs> Well, trials, you know, are various things. Trial is his trials, but he says, surely you know this. I'm amazed that um, as you are around in Christianity for a, a while, you realize that the fact that, that I don't want to say there's a, a, a few, there's a minority, but God all the time is changing and increasing in the body of Christ I'm speaking of, but in churches... <laughs> There are a few that understand this, that there's a difference between the reality of what James is saying here and the reality that most people in church live. There's a difference, and very few, I think, get it. For surely you know that what is genuine in your faith produces the patient mind that endures. Flesh wants to get it over with and get it over with now. <laughs> how can I how can I get beyond this? Not faith. Genuine faith. It says that which is genuine in your faith, or you could say genuine faith produces the patient mind that endures. Oh now you've got some on that. You know, patient mind? I must have a patient mind. <laughs> yeah. Go back to the fact, Jesus loves me, amen? He gave himself for me. I'm secure in his love. I know that all things work together for those, for me, I'm going to put in the first person, because I love God. How do you know that you love God? Because you've given him all of you. What is love? Love is sacrifice. Love is giving of yourself. Love is giving yourself, amen? Hallelujah, that's pure love. For surely you know that which is genuine in your faith produces the patient mind that endures. You see, yes, patient mind that endures. How can you have it? Fully grounded in love, amen? In the love of God. Securing the fact that He's going to work this thing out. Amen? You see, that's genuine faith. Genuine faith says, yeah, I see the circumstance. I understand. I know. I don't deny it. Do we deny it? We don't deny a mammogram, you know. Yeah, it's true. It's a machine. It does this, that, and the other thing, or all these. We don't deny the reality of the circumstance. We don't deny the reality of our weakness. We don't deny it. That's not what he's talking about here, that we deny it. That we say, no, it's not there. It doesn't exist. Some people like to hide behind that because they put a hand up. No, God, don't deal with that. Not now. Or... You know, there's many different ways, isn't it, to hide from the presence of God, hide from the work of God, the work that God's trying to do in your life. Some escape into doing church work, doing humanitarian things, doing to why? To escape what God is wanting to do right now in them. They run and hide. What are you talking about? This is, that's one form of it, isn't it? hide yourself in church work and you know it it subsides the the conscious that subsides what's the other word distracts distracts suppresses there's another word I was looking um, soothes soothes thank you that's close enough soothes the conscience enough to thinking okay everything is okay you see, God has put us on, has kept us on this earth for a purpose. First of all, is to walk with Him and to realize His His love, His purpose for our lives. Got off the beaten planet here. <laughs> That's okay. But you see, you can hide in many things. Hide in work. We can hide in you know just going to work, paying the bills. The the this. Why? Because this is the norm, right? This is what everybody does. But it's not what the Christian does. It's not for the one who's given his life to someone else. 
You see, you are not your own. You have been bought with a price. If you've given your life to Jesus, it's not yours anymore. It's His. So therefore, I go to work, at, you know, that's just a means, one means God's supplies, not the only. But all my focus and all my attention, direction of my life is not for sustaining myself, sustaining my needs. It's for finding out what the purpose of God is for your life. Amen? Because you're not your own. Wouldn't you think if you gave your life to someone else that you better find out what they wanted, what they're doing with your life? Wouldn't that, that just make sense to me? Is that just too absurd to think? <laughs> if I gave my life to Lisa and she could do with whatever she wanted to with it, she could tell me to go here, go there, do this, do that, don't do that. She has the right, doesn't she? Jesus has that right. Amen? He has that right. Because you willingly gave your life to Him. Amen? Hallelujah. That's genuine faith. That's genuine faith. Genuine faith, it says in the Scriptures that faith works by love. So genuine faith the other side of the coin is genuine love. Amen? How can I have genuine faith in the midst of any circumstance because I have genuine love for God? My love for Him is genuine. Amen? It's the real thing. Real love lays, gives of themselves. Real love gives their life back. He gave His life for us, for you. We give our lives back to Him. When he was on the cross, he didn't take it back, did he? Some way, somehow, we think at a moment's notice, we can take our lives back. And sometimes we do it daily. <laughs> but it, genuine faith says, no, I have given him my life. It's finished. When Jesus on the cross says it's finished, it's finished. Can you come to the resolution of faith, to the absolute decision that I am no longer my own, I belong to someone else? Hallelujah. How could, they, how could these guys... Genuine faith. Genuine faith then produces a patient mind. Why a patient mind? Because you know that you're in His hands. Your life is no longer yours. I don't possess it anymore. God can do with it what He wants to do. If He wants to lay me in the grave tomorrow, this body is in the grave tomorrow. But guess what? I'm present with the Lord. Hallelujah. Doesn't make me a difference. But we hold on to life, don't we? We hold on to every shred of it that we can. Not realizing that He has our best good in mind. Amen? That He has our good in mind. Hallelujah. But the patient mind, that's how you come to the, this place of this patient mind. Is knowing that, say, hey, it's not mine. Devil, you can do what you want to do. But guess what? You can only do what God allows you to do. That doesn't mean you don't fight the devil. That doesn't mean you don't rebuke him when necessary. Hallelujah. But it does mean that he is on a chain. Hallelujah. God subjects us. We get subject to it for a little while. But thank God he always brings the victory. Amen. But this is how you can have a patient mind. Knowing that God, your life is in his hands. Make the absolute decision and say, I am not my own. I am belong to Him. I don't have a life anymore. But wait. I've got desires. I've got goals. I've got things I want to do. <laughs> okay, here's what you want to do. Over here is what God wants to do. Hmm. I wish God could open each and every Christian's mind 
and give them a vision of their life <coughs> in their hands. <coughs>